George with Jungle Disk here with a quick video on what our software looks like once it's set up and configured. Now when you first sign up with Jungle Disk, you're going to get access to a control panel where you have access to update your credit card, do your invoices, and then do other things like create your online disks and also create your users. Now an online disk is pretty much just like a storage allocation. And typically when you set up a user, you would give your user their own online disk. Now I have two videos on how to create an online disk and a separate one on how to create users, but I wanted to show you what the software looks like. This is what we call our activity monitor. Now once it's set up, you would have the option here to click on configure, and this is where we're going to apply all the settings that we want uh, to have. And I'll just go one by one. So a couple key things here under the application settings, you'll have your account settings. This is the domain that you have registered with Jungle Disk as well as the user that's connected to this, uh, this instance of the work group. The bandwidth limiting section is just that. You can limit the bandwidth that you want to have allocated for Jungle Disk. Now maybe this is something you won't need, but I typically see use for this uh, when people are using our server edition of the software. I'll go ahead and minimize this. And then these are the online disks that we were talking about earlier. Now once you create that online disk, in the portal, you would then be able to connect to it here in our software. Again, the online disk is just the space uh, that you have allocated for storage. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the online disk so we can see the options that we have here. Now under the online disk, you're going to have two options, which one is network drive and the other is your actual backup vault. Now the network drive is a spot pretty much where you can have all your files uh, that you want to have easy access to. And the backup vault is more of like an insurance policy type of thing where you tell it to back up and the only time that you would use that is in the event of uh, ransomware or malware attack or you know you lost your computer. You know, you'd be able to restore from that backup. Now real quick just to kind of uh, show the network drive here uh, you do have the option for local drive mapping. This is just saying that you're going to assign it to a certain letter on your computer. So for instance, this one, the George online disk, I have it mapped to my J drive. So when I come to my computer settings here, you can see I got George here with all my files. Now again, that's just to be able to have easy access to uh, those files. Those files I'll also be able to view online through our web portal. Now here I'm gonna go to the next section that says previous versions. Now by default there's going to be some things that are checked uh, and I'll just go over some of those things. So the first one is keep previous versions of changed files. So this is just saying if you edit a file you want to have that previous version. Keep previous versions of deleted files. So if a file is ever deleted you still have those previous versions as well. This is set to a certain size of previous versions. Now the reason this is set, uh, you can change this to whatever you want. The reason this is in place is because each previous version can take up space on the storage uh, on the storage side of things so that that, that can bloat the storage that, you're, that you have. Down here on how long to keep it, this is remove previous versions after 60 days. That's by default. We do have some companies that need to set that to two years, 10 years, whatever it may be. We also have here uh, keep at most 10 uh, previous versions of each file. Again, you can set that to as many as you want. So I'll go ahead and uh, that's pretty much the gist on the network drive piece. Now the next option is the actual backup vault. Now when you first have a backup vault, you would create a job. This is, uh, from this job, you are gonna tell Jungle Disk what to do. So I already have a job created, so if I expand that, I actually have this one called just my backup. You can call it whatever you'd like. Now, once you have that job created, you would then have the option to do a schedule. So I have it backing up this VM every day at 5.30 p.m. As long as the VM is on, uh, it, it will run uh, the backup. Now, with that being said, sometimes, you know, if I'm not here at 5.30 p.m., I might have, uh, you know, a meeting that I attended and I had my computer off or I might be out of office, whatever the case may be, if my computer is off, 
then this backup will not run. So down here, you do have the option on what you want to have done if a backup is missed. So it, it defaults to backup on the next scheduled time, which means the next day at 5.30. I like to change this to backup as soon as possible, which means the next time I turn my computer on, it, the software will recognize that the backup wasn't completed and it'll run right then and there. Also here on the schedule, you do have to, uh, the option to change it anywhere from, uh, from five minutes to once a week or manually only to where you actually have to push the button in order for the backup to run. Typically, I do see it at the day, so that's why I have it set to this. Now the next one is uh, what to backup. Now in here, it's just that. It's you're telling Jungle Disk what you want to have backed up. So you can always change it. So by down here, you can click on add or change backup folders. This will then show you the tree of the server or the computer that you are, you are, you are on. You then can just click on the options that you want to have backed up. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Okay, so I only have it for this uh, uh, as my test account. Have it backing up my desktop, the uh, QB backups folder, which is right here as you can see. So once you have everything selected that you want, you would just hit OK. It'll then tell you how many files and the size uh, of all these files. And down here, you'll then see the total amount of files with the total size of all these files. And this is prior to compression. So if you do see something in here and it says 10 gigabytes, depending on the type of files that you have, that can be compressed. Okay, so the number you're going to see here is not going to be true to what is actually being backed up. Okay, again, because it will be compressed. And again, you can always uh, add or remove folders uh, whenever you need. Down here in backup options, you'll see pretty much the same option that you had for uh, the network drive, expire previous versions of deleted files after 60 days. All right, so you can change that to whatever you want it to be. Uh, one other thing I also recommend here under backup reporting, I usually like to have our customers change this to report backup summaries and detailed logs, just because that'll help in the event we ever need to troubleshoot anything. Okay, so that'll help our support team get those detailed logs to figure out what's going on if anything were to go wrong. Now I'll go ahead and minimize that. Now that's pretty much it here. You are going to see the list of all the online disks that I have access to. Like I mentioned earlier, when you create a user, you have the option to give them their own online disk, which is what I have here. And then I, you will see that I have access to some other online disks, which is you know like our legal our support online disk. And the way that works is in the admin console, uh, I gave myself access to these disks so they show up here. And I just do the same thing, I connect it to a drive. So in here, when I come back to my uh, file explorer, you'll see here that I have the different drives for all the different online disks. And if I go to legal, it'll then give me uh, all the files that are in that network drive that we need here internally. Uh, to have access for our customers. So this is everything that we need for legal, and then we have the option for support. These are a bunch of support files that we have access to, so on and so forth. Okay. So that's configuring uh, the software to meet your needs. Now I'll go ahead and click OK, and then I'll come back to this screen. Now in here, uh, when you are doing the first time setup, we do recommend to do the start backup. That way you have that first initial seed uh, uploaded and then after that it's just incremental backups which means it only backs up the changes in the blocks that were made. The next thing I want to cover is the restore files option. Like I mentioned if, if there's ever anything that goes wrong or you need a file that you know you accidentally deleted or if you became a victim of ransomware or malware you would then set up jungle disk on a new computer and then you'd have the option to do restore files. So when you click on that, you'll have a list of all the online disks that you have access to. So I'll just select mine for now. Then you would have the option to do a restore from whatever it is that you want to do, either from your backup vault or your network drive that has all those files for easy access. So I'll keep it on backup vault for now and hit OK. From here, you will then see here on the top left, where do you want to restore from, either the most recent backup or backup as of. On the backup as of, you will see a list of all the times that that 
computer or server was backed up. So you can either go from the most recent or you can go to a certain one that you're looking for. Okay, so I'll leave it on most recent for now. Here on the top right, you have the option to restore to. Typically when I do restores, I always recommend to create a folder on your desktop and restore to that folder. That way you have uh, you know, the files that you need or you're looking for easier, uh, uh, easier to access. Because if you do the original local folder, it'll restore it to wherever it was. Here you will have the tree that you have uh, scheduled to do those backups, so that's how, what it looks like. And you can either add that folder to your restore, or you could pick certain files and add certain files to your restore. Now this is huge because in the event of something happening and you need access to your files right away, and you or you know you, you got a new computer and you need access to certain files right away, you can get the files that you need right now so that you can get to work faster. And then while after those files are brought back, you can then come over here and add a folder to your restore so that that can process on the back end while you guys are up and running. So that's huge because you know it saves you time uh, and it gets you back uh, working faster. So I'll go ahead and cancel all that. Now that's the software, uh, pretty much how it looks and how it works. I just wanted to show you real quick. I'm going to come back in here and configure real quick because I wanted to talk about a couple of other things. So expanding this online disk, coming back to the network drive piece, again, these are files that are easy, uh, easy access for you. Just a couple of things uh, about it. Typically on the network drive, you don't want your network drive to be everything that you want to have, right? So again, these are just more for easy access files and things of that nature. We do have some best practices for the network drive. This data is not compressed. So if you are backing that up, you know, the, this is stuff that's going to count towards your storage. So you want to be careful with that. Now the backup vault, you know, that does compress your data and that doesn't really have a size limitation on files. However, we do like to uh, recommend best practices. You don't want to put everything into one online disk. So if you have like terabytes of data, we usually don't recommend to put all that on one online disk. This is where you would then start developing a, a, a plan to where you have multiple online disks, like here. Uh, so one thing could be, you know, you can filter it by years, you can filter it by departments, so on and so forth, like you can have HR online disk, sales online disk, so on and so forth, to where each of those online disks has about 500 gigabytes of data uh, or about 100,000 files per disk. That's typically what we recommend to where you're still safe and you're not running into errors and things like that. Okay, so again, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, appreciate you checking out this video. Hopefully it answers all your questions. If not, please make sure, make sure to reach out to our sales team. We'll definitely get on a call and answer any more technical questions that you may have. Also in the comments, I have uh, the videos on how to create an online disk and also how to create a user, just so you can see what that looks like in, on our, in our online portal. Again, thank you for your time. And please be sure to visit jungledisk.com for more ways on how to keep your business protected.